Welcome back to another video. I hate starting up YouTube videos, but we're going to dive right in. So I had a lot of people ask me about a basic node tree structure for color grading for DaVinci Resolve because I've been doing a lot of tutorials about it on Instagram and I guess a lot of people have been wanting to see my process. But first of all, I want to give a special thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on Instagram the past two months. I've been growing a crazy amount from all the reels I've been posting and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for that. And if you are coming over from Instagram and you're not subscribed yet, definitely make sure to do that. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more content on YouTube and hopefully it will be helpful for you guys. So let's get right into it. So I want to clarify that I don't stick to the same node tree structure every single time because it's all kind of dependent on the clip. But this is one of the most common ones I use and this is a great place to get started. So I have two clips here. Uh, this first one is shot on my A7S III and then the second one is shot with my GoPro. So we're going to start off with the A7S III clip first. So if we head over to the color tab, I'm going to start off with two nodes and I'm going to add the color space transform to both of them. And this first node, I'm going to name it IDT, which is input device transform. And here I'm going to set my input color space and input gamma. And this was shot in S-Log3, so the input color space is going to be Sony S Gamma 3 Cine. And the input gamma is going to be S-Log3. And then my output color space, I'm going to set it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then the output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. And if you look at the difference, this transforms my footage into a flat color profile. And SLOG3 is already a flat profile, so you might not see much of a change here. But the difference here is that DaVinci Wide Gamut is a larger color space than Rec. 709. And it also helps keep it consistent when I'm trying to grade clips that are not shot on the same camera. And my second node here will be named ODT which is Output Device Transform. And then here, I'm going to set the Output Color Space to DaVinci Wide Gamut and the Input Gamma to DaVinci Intermediate. And then my Output Color Space, I'm going to set it to Rec. 709 and Output Gamma to Gamma 2.4. And if you turn it off and on, this basically just converts your flat profile back into a standard Rec. 709 color space. And the important thing to keep in mind is that my IDT is going to be at the beginning of the node tree structure and my ODT is going to be at the very end. And all the work that I'm doing is going to be in between these two nodes. So my next two nodes are going to be white balance and exposure. And I like to set these up as parallel nodes. So if you add a node and you right click it, you can add a parallel node. And this basically means that these two nodes are taken from the same input, which is IDT. And again, you want to make sure that these two nodes are following this IDT node, but before the ODT node. And I'm going to rename this to Exposure and White Balance. So in Exposure, you're just going to look at the waveforms and you can just adjust it to your liking. And the White Balance, you can do the same thing, but make sure you do it on the White Balance node. After that, I'm going to add a node. And this is going to be my Look node. And this is usually where I do my basic color grade. And I like to play around with things like the Lift, Gamma, and the Gain color wheels. And this is how I usually add a certain look to my footage. Usually when I do a color grade node, it changes up the skin tones of my subject. So my next thing is going to be selecting the subject skin just to make sure that the skin tones are correct. And you're going to want to make a parallel node here. And the reason we want to do that is if you just make a standard serial node, if we go and select the subject skin here, and we can see what's selected. If we go back to our look node, and we add a color to it, right now everything is blue. And if you go back to the skin selections, Nothing is selected because that color doesn't exist anymore. But if we make it a parallel node, if we select a subject skin here, if we change anything to our look node, this doesn't affect the skin selection because it's taking the input from after the exposure and the white balance and it's not being affected by the look node. So here I'm going to name it skin select. And then I'm going to add two nodes here and these are going to be parallel nodes as well. This first one is going to be skin hue and the next one is going to be skin exposure. And for this one, since I already have my skin selected, obviously you can play around with these parameters just to make sure that it's only your skin being selected and not any of the backgrounds. Instead of having to reselect that for the skin hue and skin exposure, you can just drag this blue square over as an input to each of these nodes so that these are using the same selection as the skin select. And if you want to change anything, you can just change it here and it'll affect both of these. And you don't have to do it individually every single time. So for my skin hue, I usually go down to vector scope and you can press shift H 
just to make sure that it's just your skin selected. And you can use this line here. If you don't see this line, click on show skin tone indicator here. But this will show you what the skin tone is. And usually I like to play around with the tint and you can just drag it until the skin matches up with the line. Or you can play around with the gamma wheels and just bring it over a little bit. And that usually fixes up the skin tones. After this, I like to put a glow node and this is also kind of dependent on the clip. But if we type in glow, we can change our composite type to soft light. And then you can play around with the shine threshold and the spread to change how much it affects your image. Now, depending on the clip, I might want to do a little bit of noise reduction or sharpening. So for my noise reduction, I'm going to put it right at the beginning, even before my IDT. And I'm going to name this noise reduction, name this one glow. And if you go to noise reduction, usually I like to set it to three frames and set this to better. And depending on how much I need, I'll just drag this up and down. And if I have any color noise that still appears, I can uncheck this part in spatial threshold and just drag up the chroma until the color noise disappears. And for sharpening, I like to put this at the very end. So after ODT, I can make another node, name this sharpening. And if you go to sharpen here, Make sure you click sharpening and the maximum I usually like to go is probably about 0.7 and you can play around with the coring softness and the level just to kind of feather out the sharpening. Now one of my favorite things about DaVinci is that you can save all of this as a still or a power grade. So before we save it, we want to make sure that everything here is reset. So we can reset noise reduction. IDT, you don't necessarily have to reset just because I'll want to make sure to check that every single time anyways. You can reset your skin select skin hue and skin exposure. In your glow, you can just disable it and you can disable the noise reduction and the sharpening as well. And the reason I disable these is that if it's disabled, then it won't affect my footage, but it also saves effect here. So I don't have to re-drag in the glow effect every single time. And after this is all done, we can go over to stills and you can press B and this will save as a still. And the cool thing is if you go to our next clip and this is our GoPro clip, you can drag this back onto our clip and we'll have the same no tree structure that we had before. And right now it doesn't look as good because we don't have the proper color space transform here. So if you go back to the first IDT, this is just a regular Rec 709 color space. So we can change your input color space to Rec 709 and change your input gamma to gamma 2.4. And then now you have a no tree structure that you can just drag onto any of your clips and you have a really good baseline and you can modify from there. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I know a lot of people have been asking about this, so I definitely hope that this has been some use to you. And if this was helpful to you, definitely make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if there are other specific tutorials that you want to see, definitely make sure to hit me up on Instagram and let me know, or just drop a comment in the YouTube video below. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.